and sometimes on its residence. Tonight, new data reveals exactly how powerful lightning can be. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Lee. And I'm Josh Benson. Thanks for being with us tonight. Well, we've heard that Tampa is the lightning capital of the U.S., and that is true. But now, more about the severity of lightning strikes in our area. News Channel 8's Rod Carter joins us now live, and we see it all the time, Rod, and it can be dangerous. Yeah, you know, Josh, typically you can set your watch every afternoon by the lightning and the thunder that we get. In fact, I'm rather surprised it's not lightning and thundering right now. But we know that this can be dangerous. We tell people all the time when it's lightning, you need to get inside. But now we know, thanks to some USF researchers, just how severe those lightning strikes can be. It can be a fantastic light show and a dangerous show of Mother Nature's energy. Lightning in the Bay Area is both common and concerning. And the inside has been being and researchers at the University of South Florida now know so just how energized those bolts can be. And it comes from size. studying these. These are fossilized sand cylinders made by lightning strikes into the sand. They were taken from an area near Bach Tower in Polk County. Some of these are thousands of years old. So these deposits were of these rocks called fulgurites. And a fulgurite forms when lightning travels through sand. And by looking at these fulgurites, we were able to identify how much energy was present in each lightning strike. They studied hundreds of these and found, on average, Tampa Bay has high energy lightning strikes. So the average amount of energy we found in a lightning strike was about a megajoule. So what exactly does that mean? Well, a megajoule has about the same amount of energy as being hit by a car going 60 miles per hour. On the high end of that, they found a cylinder with 20 megajoules. That's like being hit by an 18-wheeler. And on the low end, they found... 0 0.05 megajoules, that's like being hit by a bicycle. So what does all that mean? It means on average... There are more high-energy lightning strikes than other types of lightning strikes than you would expect. Now, this is pretty cool. The uh, team at USF, the first set of researchers to ever look at the energy in a lightning strike after the fact versus during the strike itself. Josh? Well, Rod, we've had several cases of people struck by lightning, so why is it some people live and others die when being hit by lightning? It has to do with energy levels at some, at some point, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a part. Of, in fact, you know what? There are a lot of factors that really go into it. The energy level, it also has to do with where the person was hit. Uh, like if you're hit in the top of the head or if it's a direct strike. I tell you what, um, you know, if, example, if lightning actually hits the ground then bounces up and hits a person, then it loses some of its energy. So a lot of factors go into why some people survive strikes and other people don't. It's always good to take cover when you can. All right, Rod Carter live for us in Tampa. Thanks yeah. so much.